welcome to another episode of Staying Young at Heart. Um, my name is Maria Mera, I'm your host, and I'm also a financial advisor with Edward Jones. Today, very exciting episode, we have, we're bringing artisan breads, uh, artisan and high quality breads brought and made with Aloha from Hokkaido. And for that, I'm bringing my guest and a very good friend, Alberto Fernandez. He is the VP of Operations with Brook Bakery. Uh, welcome and thank you very much for joining us, Alberto. Hi, thank you very much to you and it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, for those who are listening to us already and thinking that um, our accents might be similar, <laughs> it's because yep. we are both from Spain. Both Spaniards, yep. <laughs> So Alberto, let's start from the beginning. What is Brook Bakery? What are, what are the differences and uh, how do you define Brook Bakery? So Brook Bakery is a Japanese bakery from Hokkaido. It was born in 1977 by the chef uh, Takemura. He was a very passionate baker that uh, used to bake uh, very good um, Japanese high quality breads. And then he fell in love with European style bread. So he went to Germany lived in Germany, learned the European style of baking. And then once he came back to his hometown in Sapporo, in Hokkaido, in the northernmost island of Japan, he started, he created that um, his own style of baking. He blended his own flowers. He, he utilized the Japanese techniques and the, with the passion and the culture of bread that we have in Europe to, to create something unique. And they became very popular. And we came to Hawaii in 2011, let's, I believe. Let's, um, let's uh, take one step at a time. So um, is, it, is that name Brook? Is that um, Japanese or it doesn't sound Japanese to me? So uh, the original name, the first name that the bakery had was Burg, B-R-U-G, uh, B-U-R-G, Burg which is the name of, the, of a castle where he used to hang out a lot in Germany. They make a very delicious wine that inspired him, that he loved very much. And he wanted to make the bread that you can enjoy with wine. Not just the bread that you will eat with a sandwich, but a bread that you will sit with a nice, you know, cup of wine, a little bit of cheese, and you would enjoy. So he wanted to have a name that evoke those, those feelings, those memories from, from those European breads. So he created a, a Burg, and then when we came to Hawaii, the URG become, became a R-U-G, so Brook. Uh, oh, although now, nowadays, the, the Jap Japan side of Brook, it became also Brook after the Hawaiian um, side of the, of the company. Oh, or, okay, so how many stores are there in Japan and how many stores in Hawaii now? It's four in Japan and five in Hawaii. So where are the five ones in, in Hawaii? They are all in, they are, uh, the Hawaii ones are two in Alamoana shopping mall, one downstairs, uh, mountainside. The other one is in the food court, the Lanai at Alamoana. Then there is the Perich store uptown. There is one store in uh, Manoa Marketplace and one store that that's the newest one that opened in Kahala Mall, right behind Kahala Mall. Be best places <laughs> which what a story is the is the best selling store uh before pandemic the busiest store used to be the lanaya dalla moana that had a lot of food traffic it has a good combination of locals and visitors but now without visitors i think uh it will be a tie between the lanai and kahala probably kahala a little bit more right now it's so probably it, our busiest it store sells more or it's more profitable Oh, it's both. Like it has more food. It has more traffic of like a constant uh, drop of local and regular customers that come for their daily bread. So a lot of loaves of bread are sold in Kahala. Uh, the Lanai at Alamoana is more pastries and drinks. Somebody just working maybe on the go. They want to grab and go something healthy. Mm -hmm. And you can have something quicker than fast food, but it's definitely healthier. It's made slower, right? Yeah, uh, and it's definitely delicious. Let's let's show a little video Thank of uh, what we are talking about to just give people a little bit of uh, an image. I, 
can only smile when I see those those items there. <laughs> I know that's a popular one. That's so, the, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how many items do you or uh, how do you call how many breads or how many items do you sell in the in the stores? Yes, we're busy. We we sell actually over seventy cans of bread, freshly made every day. So we have a lot of sweets, a lot of savories. Uh, we make over 10 types of dough, which is not so common. A lot of places, they just make one or two types of dough in a range toppings. We, we just make from scratch different types of bread. We believe that each um, topping requires a different texture and a different um, personality to the dough. And do we try to do as much as we can to please the customer. So the, you have different, different breads in different stores? Yes. How, how Major you that? Majority of the bread, like we have 80% of the bread that they are common and they are based off the common root of the Hokkaido bakeries, like our, you know, very loyal to our origins. But we have very well, you know, skilled, trained professional bakers and they are creative people. They are very proud of what they do. So we, we give them room to, to have a, space to create new product to develop new ideas sometimes they have a new product in the market or it's a season for a special fruit so they want to make a jam and with that jam make a special fruit danish or uh when we have seasonal items we let them ex a little bit experiment right like uh try to have a our little r d of <laughs> local bakery to <laughs> sometimes create new product that they were actually not even that we never copied from anywhere before. Like we just tried to have our own original. So can you can you tell us what are your best items or your your most popular items? Depends on the location. Some customers like more or others, but there are some that they are very popular across all the stores. I would say like the loaves of bread, the toast bread, it's a vegan bread, sugar and dairy free. And it's a little bit crispy, very soft. It has a lot of very pillowy, a crumb and that one is very popular across all the stores and um savory is definitely the sausage roll maybe that's a part of the uh, mix of the japanese culture and american culture the hot dog culture meets the japanese arabiki sausage and it's a crunchy kind of a snappy type of uh, japanese sausage with a soft bread and that's popular because adults like it kids like it it's very soft and sweets, we have cute ones that have chocolate custard, like the Kuma chocolate that has like a cute bear face. And um, yeah, I would yeah, think I that those ones are the most popular that, ones. I, I think that our images are not matching the, the items that you're, that, that you're talking about, but um, that gives room for everybody to go to the closest location and <laughs> try. True, yeah. very diff that is almost sure something that each personality right like with over yeah. 70 types of pastries so is there anything in hawaii that is similar to um brook or or um this is a, a unique concept well there are other bakeries there are asian bakeries there have been also japanese bakeries now some of them they close down uh, other ones coming or planning to come hawaii is a special and difficult market for any kind of um small food business and bakery has small margins. It's not a, like a, a big um, restaurant uh, or like a franchise name. So it's quite unique. There is no other Japanese bakery that imports their flowers from Japan like we do, like from Hokkaido at least. Like we are very specific and proud of, you know, bring up that Hokkaido value because Hokkaido, it's a very, a place well known for all Japanese to have some of the most exquisite food, dairy, flowers, rice. So we are, in that sense, we are quite unique. But um, there are other Asian bakeries that have somewhat similar, but I don't see the, I don't see it as the, the, same. the same. Yeah. So yeah. you you don't really bring the products from Hokkaido. What you bring no, we just bring the, the ingredients. Bring it's just the, the fresh raw ingredient and we cook just locally everything locally made on the spot each store bakes for itself okay and i i sometimes i think uh, we also have a video of uh, the parmesan so you're you're 
uh, connecting the European with the Parmesan or the with the mochi yeah. the Japanese yeah. and then make it Hawaiian. Uh, maybe we can show that video too um, if if we have it. Uh, And I keep smiling. <laughs> I keep smiling. So, um, Alberto, how many employees do you have? I, I, and you were talking about how much you value mm. the input, and uh, but how how many employees do you do you have in Hawaii? We used to be close to a hundred people team before a pandemic. Now we are about a little bit more, like sixty, around that, around that size. So that, yeah. that it, it hit pretty bad. Yeah. Are you are you already rehiring or thinking of maybe? We are we are we are hiring. We are hiring at some locations, and um, we are is, is always looking for professional bakers that they are passionate about what they do and they are willing to learn the type of um, techniques and baking techniques that we do. And it's difficult to find that um, type of. Um, qualified people that, um, it, you know, a schedule is difficult starting at 4 a.m. You have to wake up very early and it's very, it's physically demanding because you have to really work fast paced and we are hiring and always looking for, you know, passionate people that um, they can always email us and we are more than happy that, yeah. Okay, have interviews with we'll, them. we'll make sure we'll give your, your email at the end. Um, so, uh, how how does the process work? Do you um, do you make all the um, the items? I keep saying items. I'm the bread mm -hmm. bread and items. And uh, do you make them in the same place and then they get distributed to all the stores or? It's no, store we don't do central kitchen because um, that we notice that our type of dough that it's very delicate. So that damages the quality of the product in the transportation because it's very hot. You would have to keep it in banjos. Uh, our savories is all like between salt and disposed, between baked and disposed, excuse me. It only go four hours. So there is no room for baking in a central kitchen, delivering it and then trying to. So we just do it, keep it as fresh as possible. And then once time is gone, um, we be be bring a new batch. Just bake it in each store. Not the dough. Everything is done from on each location. Try to have the. That's why also we have the Japanese side of blue doesn't have. Many people are surprised that we only have four bakeries in Japan, but our type of um, idea and values doesn't scale. So you don't gain efficiencies by growing more and more and more, and you you don't have a lower cost or it doesn't become easier because. Um, each store becomes a new place to create a new genuine breads, right? So we don't get benefits of a scale. So we keep it smaller, big enough to reach to many people and being able to import products, but not as big as to lose touch with the customers and with the products. Okay. So you want it to make it very local also. Yes. That's one of the points that being always focusing on the local repetitor type of, um, customers that become friends over the years. So, um, quick question before we go to the break. Um, mm -hmm. Are the prices in, Haw in Hawaii the same as uh, or, or to the Sapporo? Uh, the, yeah, would, would they be more or less the same? We are, a some products are a little bit more expensive here because we have to import the flour. They have it already available. The rents are smaller in there. Um, we are in major shopping malls with a lot of food traffic. So all of those costs sometimes get reflected, but we haven't changed much the prices since we opened. So we, compared to other um, food businesses that make the food uh, readily available, like I think is um, not expensive compared to other similar type of product and size of, of, of food. 
Okay. Okay. Well, let's leave it there for uh, for now. We're gonna go to a break, and we'll be right back with our guest today, Alberto Fernandez from Group AK. Welcome back, everybody. Um, again, I'm with Alberto Fernandez, with the VP of Operations of Brook Bakery. And uh, we were talking before about um, uh, high cost, high quality, or... Uh... Yeah, like we were talking about um, bread quality and how if the prices were similar in Hokkaido and in Hawaii. And, um, Probably the prices here compared dollar to yen is uh, more costly here, but uh, compared to other um, food and local uh, restaurants in Hawaii, we are definitely a lower cost of having, a, for example, a family of three or four persons eating in the mall is yeah. quick and cheaper than most of the other options that we have, yet the quality and the value you get is... Uh, more than other similar bread companies yeah. out there. And I, I want to, um, this is me and my background, right? I, I want to focus a little on the business, on the business side, because to, to me, it's very impressive. It, it started in Japan. You had four stores in Japan. You arrived to Hawaii well, no, with, with one yeah. store, right? You started just the one store in yes. Arizona. So, so yeah, continue. Yeah. So Sorry. how how do you how do you go from one store to five stores in five years or yeah, five or six years. Yeah, it's a five. successful story in Hawaii that I would like to dig a little more on on how did you go from one store to another? Was was there a plan from the beginning or you just okay. one store and then so the founder and the the owner, the the one the person who purchased the business from the founder. Um, this, his name is Tokuichi Tanjama. And then he, he, they purchased the business. He came to Hawaii. He regularly fly to Hawaii. And he saw that there was not any Japanese bakery that he liked in, in here, although there was some. So he thought that the bread that they were doing, it could be something that could be of value to, to the local market. He created the first the store in the old Shirokia that the person who still remember the old Shirokia so in the space where the old San Germain used to be, uh, they took over the space and created, they created the, the, the first bakery there. And uh, at that time, um, neither my wife or I, which are the persons that are in charge right now through Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, were in Hawaii. So five months after the store was open and set up, we took over from there. And um, then Shirokia closed down and we lost the store. And we lost everything because that was the only shop that we had in Hawaii. And it was a very difficult time. But at that time, especially my wife, who was the president and still, uh, she was the person who took over the, the just took the, the decision to continue the business in Hawaii, look for another location, try to find uh, other, find investors, find partners. Um, we got loans. We did everything we could and we had in our hands to make sure that uh, Brook didn't disappear from Hawaii, and four months after or three months after closing that Shirokia, suddenly closed down. We were able to open another standalone store outside of Shirokia, which is the Alamoana downstairs. It was a very small shop, very humbled, 
we did what we could in very in <laughs> very yeah but it was a very small yeah yeah location it's still like i was Compared kind of to... it was the third in a way it was the ugly side of the mall so to speak it was a yeah. tiny shop we went from a fancy location on the mall level in front of the you know close to the apple store cartier shops all premium to be in a standalone store that we we yeah, bought out a pre yeah, it was called the pretzel maker before they wanted to leave out so we took over their lease and it's like okay you guys are out then we just we need to get a quick kitchen with all the permits so we can open something quick because customers are just gonna forget about that and she okay, so wanted you, to open you, its own bakery so it was a difficult time there was a commitment there from everybody involved, right? That we stick yes. to this, we are made yes. to this, and oh, we have, make this happen. Yeah. We are very appreciative to the bakers at that time. They they didn't leave. They were not sure if they could keep a job. We couldn't, we didn't have any sales. We didn't have any location. I started to do farmer's market by myself during those four months. We rented a kitchen. Uh, started to do farmer's market, so at least we kept the name out. I was doing farmer's market by myself from Waimanalo to Ka Kailua to um, Saturday, KCC, everywhere, just to keep it alive. And then we made it through that hard time to that, to that tiny little store. From that tiny little store, we got an opportunity to open the store in Pearl Ridge. So we took it and it was a still difficult time because, you know, when you're starting a business, Money is short, difficulties come by, you know, yeah, never oh. come alone. And, and <coughs> again, me. Hawaii bless you. And um, in, in Hawaii, even more, it, it's uh, I mean, if, if anything is, Hawaii is well known for not being able to be very welcoming mm -hmm. to new businesses. Yeah, it's challenging, it's very so, challenging. But so you go from now we have two stores, and but you keep investing mm -hmm. and you keep believing in the uh, in, in the yep. project. So everything we made, we just poured it back into it in, in, in all sense. Like we just did our best, just worked very hard. And... So fast, fast forward to now, or maybe fast forward to before COVID, um, you opened the new store in Kahala and everything is, uh, is looking pink <laughs> for, lack of a, yeah. for lack of a better word. Um, right? Is, is, is that where you were right before COVID? Like all, all the stores mm. were being profitable? Yeah, all, all the stores are running, all the stores are profitable, and they are not running at the same point as before, but we are blessed that we are still open and that we can still work because we see our peers, our friends, other business owners who you talk to, and some people it's, you know, handling, but some people it's really, really damage yeah fortunately yeah. bread is something that everybody almost eats every day it's something it's, it's one of our staple of yeah. our societies i know japan is more a rice culture but in recent years became also a bread country so yeah. it's a staple and yeah well tell us to uh, spaniards that we need to have our bread in oh every day right or yeah most every day Europeans are like that so fresh bread uh, every day how have you adjusted to COVID? What is different now in the store? Or uh, did you need to implement anything, any, any rules? Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks for asking that. We were actually one of the first ones. Uh, at that time, when COVID started in Hawaii, I actually, I was in Spain. And I, I was able to see how bad and serious the situation was before here. We fully realized and comprehend how deep was gonna change this everything. So I was talking every day with my wife, with Miho, the president and say, we have to take action right now. This is severely gonna damage everywhere. Like don't think it's not gonna to get to Hawaii, it's gonna get everywhere and it's gonna be suddenly. So please take a quick action before everybody's taking action. So we implemented those shield screens before almost any other places. We put a uh, cover shelf. We used to have open shelves where people just can grab their own pastries. Now it's closed, and then all the bread items are bagged because we already had connections with um, China for importing. So we were able to bring our own food, like food safety type of bags in scale to have all the breads, each single item bagged individually. So we have to come in earlier, prep earlier, prep more, 
have the bread displayed, and then we also have to have shorter hours because we have to start earlier. So let me uh, make a point here. You're joining us for beautiful Waimanalo, and yes. you're in a farm, so. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> scenery. Now the yeah, chickens and horses. Yeah, it's not a green, it. it's not just a greener screen that we see um, from everybody. It's just, a, it's, it's really green and it's, uh, it's in Hawaii. I know, it's so beautiful that it looks like a set up a background, but it's real, you can feel like a yeah, little more touch. I got a little distracted with the um, with the chickens there. With the, I know they came to visit me. I have some breads around me, so yeah, I was also that's, taking some beautiful shots of new products, and maybe they they smell the delicious bread and they yeah. think I will feed them. <laughs> I usually yeah. feed um, the animals around here. You're teasing them. Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, so I I I got. <laughs> It and makes that, it more unique, right? So more natural. Is your, we, we were talking about best, best sold items. You didn't tell us about your, um, your favorite one. My favorite? Oof, I have a lot of favorites. But the one I eat the most, I recently um, started to eat a lot. We have like a shokupang. Shokupang is the, what we call a sandwich bread, right? And we have a sandwich bread now with a very nice sourdough that we make. So it's very much a mix of uh, the sourdough culture from San Francisco in the U.S. with the Japanese shokupan, and I love I love that that product, and that's my sang my slice of bread every morning. <laughs> so um, Alberto, we are running out of time, but um, so there is this here in Hawaii, this is Spaniard mm -hmm. and uh, the VP of operations of a Japanese uh, bakery. So. Um, you're very unique. You're uh, always a pleasure to talk to. You're one of my best friends. Um, I'm going to give you, so you please close uh, however you want, whatever you want to tell our audience, and then I uh, will wrap it up. Well, just um, thank you very much for supporting local businesses. Think Tech Hawaii is a beautiful platform that does a lot of work, creates a lot of quality content. Thank you, Maria, for bringing me to your show. It's really a pleasure and an honor. And if there is anybody that either knows our baker would like to know more about what we do, we have five locations and we're always, you know, waiting with their arms open, our shelf full of bread and hoping that everybody finds something that they love. Uh, yeah, I don't know anyone who doesn't go to the store and falls in love with it. <laughs> and, uh, so Thank I don't you know so much. anyone who meets you and uh, doesn't uh, um, love the person that you are and your family. Thank you very much, Alberto. Thank you very much, Maria. And uh, thank you to all our audience again for joining us in, uh, in our Stay in Janet Hart show. And we look forward to seeing you in the, uh, in the next show. Thank you. Aloha. Mahalo.